Hello guys, in uh, today's tutorial, I will show you how to upgrade the uh, um, M2 uh, SATA, SATA SSD for the XG7 NetGate XG7100 uh, One U PFC and Security Gateway. So if you uh, purchase uh, did with the the default custom build, it's gonna come with the 32 gigabyte eMMC on board and. Uh, it uh, it incredibly it it's pretty slow so that the reason one the reason why I want to upgrade it to uh, SSD you can use the two forty five um, inch SSD um, however it uh, they do not include the two forty five inch um, SSD mail racket uh, inside the uh, one U uh, platform. For a thousand dollar, I would expect that they would include it in there, um, but apparently they didn't. So the best way to get the M2 SATA uh, SSD, and remember, it only work with the M2 uh, SATA only. If you get the M2 uh, NVMe and uh, M2, it's not gonna boot. It's only work for with the M2 uh, SATA only. And uh, NetGate make it uh, extremely easy to upgrade it. They actually have um, the installation guide that you can uh, follow. They show you step by step how to remove it, uh, open up the box and uh, remove all the connection, all the screw, and uh, where to locate the M2 say the SSD slot. So it's fairly easy. Um, in this video, I'll show you the installation part of it. So uh, you're gonna need the USB console cable. Plug in your USB console cable. Once you've done that, uh, you're gonna go to uh, device manager and go to uh, ports, com, and uh, LTP, LPT. Second lab. Uh, if you on uh, window, majority of time it, it gonna automatically uh, update the driver, so you don't really have to. But if uh, you have an issue, uh, they actually have a tutorial on uh, how to uh, connect the console. Let me see. Reinstall PFC right here. Hey, right here they have a uh, the tutorial on how to connecting uh, to the console port. So something to follow. So it on uh, com five. So what can we do? We're gonna fire up um, putty. There we go. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to uh, zero, and you're gonna change it to com five. And I already have the. Um, setting uh, already set in here so I'm gonna go ahead and load it and you're gonna change the speed to uh, 115 200 and we're gonna go ahead and open that connections and uh, actually before you do that you're gonna nick the uh, firmware so on the NetGate device actually have a menu uh, factor firmware it different with the community uh, edition that they, they have available for download on their website if you under the contract and you just log in on the customer portal and you can download it yourself if you're not under NetGate support contract then uh, you have to uh, sign up for the the server uh, desk portal account and then from there you just request them uh, for the um, original ma manufacturer uh, firmware uh, not firmware but uh, more like a custom uh, PFC inversion it not a community editions for um, the NetGate whatever you uh, the uh, device you're using and they get back to you pretty quick uh, when I submit mine it only took them like half an hour or so and uh, they get back to me and give me the link for, to download the uh, OS the ISO file for the PFC in uh, OS and uh, Make sure that uh, you burn it uh, to your USB. They have tutorial available, but however, if uh, 
you do not know how to do that, I have a couple of tutorial on how to um, burn the ISO file to USB as a bootable USB. You can look it up in uh, my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, with that, plug in your uh, U uh, bootable USB that you created with the PFC, uh, PFC in, uh, OS in it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fire up uh, the NetGate device. And I'm gonna uh, press uh, ESC or Escape the minute it boot up. To uh, select the boot menu, right here, you can see that uh, I have a USB, Samsung USB, and the Crusoe uh, 250 gigabyte uh, M2 SATA that uh, installed it on the um, NetGate. Um, I forgot what model is this. XG7101U. All right, I want to uh, select option one to boot from USB. Some of you are probably gonna ask me like, do I think it worth it to buy the NetGate? Um, damn, I keep forgetting the model. Uh, HG7100 one U. Uh, definitely, uh, I don't think it worth it uh, for a thousand dollar. You can uh, get the um, micro thick router uh, for. Um, Three hundred fifty dollar or almost four hundred dollars. It half cheaper than the PFC, but what you didn't get at the the software within it. I like the PFC. I like the way it is. I actually like it uh, better than the Upsins. Um, I like the um, PF blocker function a lot. Uh, why I don't have to uh, use this uh, pie hole to do that to filter out the uh, air traffic. Meanwhile, I can actually run it on the sandbox. So why do uh, why do I buy it? Okay, it actually use half of the power compared to um, what is actually running on um, my old uh, Dell Up Optilex seventy ten, I believe, the small flat form. It use half power. So it at it idle at uh, 16 watt, and I think it it can be up to like 20, 24 while it's running, depending on the traffic that going through it. All right, uh, so from here we're gonna select the X term for the uh, terminal console. I'm gonna accept it, and we're gonna install it. And from here, you can uh, configure uh, your keyboard. Uh, mine at US, so I'm gonna go with the default settings. And from um, here, you have option to uh, do the auto, which is uh, you're gonna use the entire disk. Um, I don't want to do that. I only want to use uh, part of it. So that means um, I'm gonna leave some room on the SSD for um, over revisions. So by default, if uh, if the partition is uh, not formatted uh, and it raw partitions, the SSD automatically treat it at the over revisions, and that gonna extend the lifespan of your SSD. So we're gonna go with our menu options, and uh, let's see, ADA, that the SSD that I, um, the M2 SATA uh, crucial that I installed in there. So I'm gonna select that one. And I'm gonna select the re A option, and we go with the GPT or guy uh, partition table. Okay. And from there, we're gonna go back and uh, select the side. You know, hit tap option, tap option one more, tap one more time. There you go, and we go down with the down arrow. And I'm gonna change this. This is totally up to you, but I think personally, I think at 20 gigabyte is more than enough uh, for it to run on uh, to run PFC on. But uh, let's do 30. 
30 gigabyte and then uh, the mail point we're gonna use a forward slash for um, root partitions and once you've done that you can hit O for OK or tap and then enter and it'll be yes and here you go it will be a uh, two uh, partitions so the file that the boot that the UEFI and the other one is gonna be um, where we're gonna put the um, PFC on and once you're done that we'll hit finish and we're gonna hit enter again and there you go guys it uh, installing uh, PFC uh, on the XG7100 uh, right now when it uh, finished you just remove the USB and it automatically boot uh, by default the BIOS set to uh, boot on the first available hard drive so if the hard drive is available in there it automatically uh, pick up uh, the M2 SATA instead of using the EMMC on onboard memory uh, from here it depends on what your device is my at the XG7100 1U so I'm gonna select that option and enter and uh, it finished it answer you that you want to have make any modification if no just hit no and you, you're gonna reboot make sure that you remove the US, uh, USB um, when it re before it rebooting and that's it for the tutorial guy uh, thank you for watching and if you think the tutorial is helpful give us a thumb up uh, and subscribe to my channel